3D printing is what's called additive manufacturing, but in layman's terms, what really happens in the machine is a spool of plastic gets heated up and then it gets deposited onto a build plate. And you can think of it kind of how a hot glue gun works. It squeezes out the plastic and in the areas where you don't want any plastic to come out, it can actually stop the flow. It can build up in any object that you can design and it builds it one layer at a time. So you start from nothing and it will build all the way up to what you want. For us, uh, 3D printing is uh, FDM, which is fused deposition modeling, which is an additive process that adds layer by layer by layer. The biggest part of 3D printing is that it is rapid prototyping. So you can make a piece and then realize that it doesn't fit quite right or it could work better if you made a slight adjustment. You can go back to the computer, make the adjustment and print and the turnaround time can just be minutes. Whereas in traditional manufacturing, it could take days or weeks. This is actually the place to be in the world right now. We're gonna explore what happens when you put very powerful technology in front of students. My name is Don Christian. I have the privilege of serving as president at SUNY New Paltz. It's a really interesting story. The faculty in art and engineering and computer science had been trying to find a focal point for how they could collaborate and do something really special for students at New Paltz, blending art and technology. And I happened to have a conversation here in my office in, it was probably October 2012, with Larry Gottlieb, who at the time was with uh, Westchester Economic Development. And he happened to ask, do you have any capability in 3D printing? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, we do have some interest there, and there have some, been some faculty working on this. And he said, that's going to be a next big thing. I took that to the two deans at the time who were working on this, and within about three days, they had a proposal come together on a 3D printing initiative. So it was kind of a combination of building on some strengths that had been growing here at the college and almost a crystallizing effect of that outside interest in 3D printing that, that really, really got this moving. My name is Dan Friedman. I'm Dean of the School of Science and Engineering and Director of the Hudson Valley Advanced Manufacturing Center. It's an ideal way of introducing a lot of different people to the idea of design and fabrication and design iterations. When we started thinking about this, we realized we wanted to be able to have a lot of people in a class using 3D printing all at the same time. So that means having a class of 20 to 30 students go in and print. And then in the next several months, I had further conversations with Mike Oates and Sean Eldridge at Hudson River Ventures about their interest in helping us spur this, this initiative. And in a matter of a short time, we had a plan in place to develop a center here at New Paltz to develop a curriculum. And we announced this in late May of 2013 at a conference here on the campus. So it really came together remarkably quickly over about a seven or eight month period. And we had a really nice meeting with the MakerBot leadership team in December and President Christian decided to basically go forward with us. My name is Paige Monroe. I'm a senior. I'm a metals major here at New Paltz and I work in the digital fabrication lab. I originally came to New Paltz for the metals program. I'm from Michigan and I knew it was the best program in the country for their grad program so I wanted to go where I was going to get you know the best education. So I came just to do metals, and then I got involved in 3D printing, as this wasn't even a big thing, you know, when I was in high school four years ago. I didn't, I had never even heard of it before. I think coming here and taking the craft and virtual space class and learning how to use Rhinoceros, the modeling program, um, got me really involved in it initially. Most of my metals work is uh, super geometric. I definitely plan ahead for what I'm doing, and a lot of that I need you know, exact precise measurements. I need to know what I'm gonna cut out before I actually go and do it. And if it wasn't for the CAD software and the layout, I think I would have a really difficult time achieving that precision and then making it an actual functional object. So I think that the design has definitely increased 
um, the precision in my work specifically. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Snyder and I am a physics major and I'm a senior here at New Paltz. I got involved in 3D printing first with a research project over the summer at Stony Brook University and after that research project I heard that we had a new and exciting initiative at SUNY New Paltz that was much larger than anything else in the country. So that's when I talked to Dr. Daniel Friedman, the Dean of Science and Engineering, and he helped me to get a job working with 3D printing here. I work on a lot of various different types of projects with the printer. I interact with a lot of different departments. I've worked with engineers prototyping their senior designs, helping the biology department to model a self-assembling virus, to all different types of, of projects. They, they really vary. My favorite part of working with the printers is the different types of projects that I can work on. I get to work on something that's a little bit different every day. I learn a lot from working with other people, which is what I like the most. I'm Kat Wilson. I'm a metals MFA student and I'm the graduate assistant in the digital fabrication lab. I find that my work is, I kind of like to think of it as a collaboration between myself and the machines. What's been great is that since I do have access to them, I've been able to, in a sense, work more intimately. I'm able to uh, see how I can change out print material, print color to get different striations. I've also learned how Changing settings on the computer can alter the effect that a piece may have as far as density or structure is concerned. So that's been something that you can't really learn if you are outputting files, but you can certainly get from experiencing uh, the actual process of printing. Hi, my name is James Petrowski. I'm a freshman here at SUNY New Paltz. I'm a mechanical engineering major, and I'm a student assistant at the MakerBot Innovation Center. To be honest, when I was in high school, I figured 3D printing was a NASA kind of thing where normal people wouldn't have any access to it and then uh, I got here and in my first semester in Dr. Shanley's class he had given us a project to design a cell phone case and then they would be 3D printed. My ultimate goal when I graduate college is to go to Walter Reed Army Hospital and to work with their prosthetics program and uh, help design new limbs for veterans. 3D printing is really taking over that industry right now. Now that you know, I know about all this 3D printing and, and the potential that it does have in that industry to really make it more accessible to people who can't pay $60,000 for a robotic arm. Before now, if you damaged your limb, you had to buy a whole new one. But now with 3D printing, you can just print a replacement part and put it on yourself. With the MakerBot Innovation Lab, uh, the students get to access the 3D printer. At this level, it's kind of amazing. Uh, students can come in whenever they want to and print whatever they want. We have a ton of printers that are available and a ton of material to print in. I think that having that level of access to becomes a game changer for a lot of people, uh, especially students that may or may not have access to a studio to develop an object. It became very clear that, that democratizing access to 3D printing would be really critical in building the kind of interdisciplinary focus. You know, we want our students, art students and others, to be able to fool with the technology and, and make mistakes and create new things. And if we have very limited access, that's more and more difficult. Having the lab be student run, it definitely creates a nice environment for students to come in. They know that, you know, someone who is equal to them is helping them assist in running the, the program. Then maybe they'll feel comfortable to run it themselves, knowing that someone who's just like them can run it as well. So it creates a good learning environment. I think it gives us a lot of confidence knowing that we can run such a big deal program right now in our school and it's all students doing it. So it's great to be a part of that. I've been working on a side project for a, a hockey puck for the vision impaired with Dr. Shanley, um, who is legally blind and also a hockey player. It's uh, bigger than a normal hockey puck, and it's hollow. And the inside, we put ball bearings made of aluminum and bells and really anything that will roll around and make a lot of noise so the players can track the puck that way. During my undergrad, during my uh, senior show, my concept was that I would make a lantern for small children who were afraid of the dark so that while they were sleeping it would be dull and closed and then if they were afraid they could open it and light would shine. However, I felt that it was a bit limiting having just the one globe. So when I came here and I had experience with the MakerBots, I realized that I could take the same file that I had made two years ago 
and I can make all of these other bulbs in different colors. I also printed it in a crystal blue color and a glow in the dark so that it could sit there and have a softer glow. It was, it was quite exciting for me. <laughs> We're rolling out the, the digital design and fabrication program, which we started as a certificate program. We're just putting all the pieces together to submit it for approval as a minor. We want to offer some one credit courses and sort of basic 3D printing and design. So everybody on the campus can at least get a taste of this at, at whatever level they're really interested in. Part of the Hudson Valley Advanced Manufacturing Center and the Digital Design and Fabrication Certificate Program. We offer it for uh, non-matriculated students. We actually partner students with local businesses to kind of to solve design problems that they may have. And one of the businesses that we've paired students with is a chocolatier in Kingston that utilizes CNC milling to create custom chocolate molds. So the students will design CAD models to cut CNC plastic in order to uh, mold chocolate, which is a really great experience, I think, for them. And, Plus it's chocolate, so it's great. <laughs> it would be an ideal world in my mind if we could attract 3D businesses to the area that would employ our graduates, whether they're in art, mechanical engineering, computer science, bolstering the regional economy and creating opportunities for our graduates to live and work. That would be a great vision to realize. The reason our program is called Digital Design and Fabrication is that you don't have the freedom to fabricate whatever you want until you can design it. I sometimes have used the phraseology of 3D printing perhaps being a technological liberal art. And so I, I want to be sure that it's clear that we're not thinking about this narrowly as how to run a machine in a simple mechanical sort of sense, but as a way of opening a door for students to learn new ways of thinking, new ways of interacting with people in other disciplines. The way that engineers think about things, for example, versus artists, it can intersect in digital technology, but overall it's quite different. And I think that that interaction can greatly influence their work. So in that sense, I think that the, the process of getting to the end result has been altered for the better. I think that 3D printing is kind of breaking down education in the sense that it's making it more hands-on. Not only teaching theory, but teaching practical application and just really bringing students from behind a computer to in front of a product. You take risks sometimes. We took a risk in part moving this ahead at a much more aggressive schedule than typically happens in academia. And our economic development partners were very impressed with that. I think the future of 3D printing at New Paltz is a pretty bright one, to be cliche. When students come in here, they're usually first amazed, and then they instantly want to try everything. It's free for students and really anybody to come in and bring a file that they'd like to print, and we'll make it a tangible object for them. And I think that that's just going to keep getting more and more publicity. Being the first school to have this big, huge make about array is the first, and I can definitely see it being the standard for other programs. Hopefully, across the country, man, we could be printing things across schools. We could have, you know, MakerBot innovation together. One of the most rewarding pieces right now is seeing the excitement that I'm learning about that our students are having over this this opportunity, and, and so that really makes it worthwhile and doubly exciting for me.